As you probably know, this is a Van de Graaff generator, and it's widely used in schools to demonstrate a range of electrostatic phenomena. Now, it can be quite tricky to get working, and I'll give you a couple of tips on that in a minute. But for now, let's just switch it off, discharge it, and take a look at how it works. The Van de Graaff generator is basically a device for moving electrons from down here to up here. Now the electrons begin their journey on a piece of metal at the base called a comb. They're then carried on this moving belt to this sphere where they accumulate until the voltage becomes high enough to create a spark. They then travel to this secondary sphere through the metal, through this wire and back to the comb at the base. Now this gap is approximately four centimeters, which means that in order to create a spark, the voltage between the spheres needs to exceed 100,000 volts. When I rub this balloon on my shirt, it becomes electrically charged. That's because there's a transfer of charge between the balloon and my shirt. Now this occurs because the cotton in my shirt attracts electrons more strongly than the rubber in the balloon. And a similar process happens in the Van de Graaff generator. As the rubber belt approaches the plastic roller, the electrons in the rubber are attracted to the plastic roller. The material of the roller has been chosen especially to make this happen. This leaves the outer surface of the belt positively charged. As the belt travels round, it passes the lower comb and electrons are attracted across the gap onto the belt. These electrons are then taken up on the belt to the upper sphere. Now the electrons on the belt repel each other, but they're unable to move because of the insulating properties of the rubber and the insulating properties of the air. So let's see what happens when the electrons reach the upper dome. Here, the belt passes a second metal comb, which provides a conducting path for the electrons to leave the belt, travel through this wire, and spread out over the upper dome. Now, there have been a couple of subtleties about this explanation that I'd like to draw your attention to. The first concerns the contact between the rubber of the belt and the plastic of the roller. When I rub the balloon on my shirt, we cause charge transfer by friction between the two materials. Here, in the Van de Graaff generator, the charge transfer occurs simply by contact between the rubber of the belt and the plastic of the roller. The second point concerns the metal comb. The metal comb doesn't have to actually touch the rubber in order to provide a conducting path. Electrons are able to move across that gap quite easily. And the third point concerns the material of the rollers. The upper roller is made of a different type of plastic to the lower roller. It's been chosen to attract electrons less strongly than the material of the lower roller. And because of this, there's a net transfer of electrons from the lower part of the apparatus to the upper part of the apparatus. If the rollers were made of the same material, you can see by symmetry that there'd be no transfer of electrons. When Van de Graaff generators come out of storage, they frequently don't work very well at first, and the usual culprit for this is moisture. Moisture on the rubber belt provides conducting paths by which electrons can work their way back down to the base. Also, moisture in the air provides conducting paths through which electrons on the dome can leak away. So the cure for both of these is a hairdryer. Running a hairdryer over the belt of the Van de Graaff while it's working for about five minutes should cure both of those problems. If the Van de Graaff still doesn't produce good sparks, then it could be the insulating supports. If these have fingerprints on, then these also provide conducting paths by which the charge can leak away. Cleaning with isopropyl alcohol should cure that. If the Van de Graaff still isn't working, then it could be the belt. If the belt feels dry or brittle, then it's time to get a new belt. 
Now, before I show you my favorite demonstration, a word about safety. Despite the very high voltages that they generate, Van de Graaffs are surprisingly safe. That's because the amount of charge in each spark is really rather small. So for healthy people, there really is very little hazard. However, if there's somebody in your class that has a heart condition, then they should keep their distance from the machine. About a meter should be okay. Now, on with the demonstration. You can do all kinds of things with a Van de Graaff generator. You can make people's hair stand on end. You can light a Bunsen burner. You can pass electric charge along a whole line of small children. But I like this demonstration, which just involves some metal cake tins. Watch this. The Van de Graaff generator is charging the dome with electrons and they spread out across the dome. Because the cake tins are metallic, the electrons also move onto the cake tins. The tins become negatively charged and so they repel each other. The one at the top doesn't have the others weighing it down. And so as the charge builds up, eventually the repulsion becomes sufficient to push it off the pile and lift it into the air. Then the same thing happens to the one that's now on the top and so on down the pile.